we have to go to NXT. Uh, this was, you know, I, in, in watching this week, uh, Raw was eh to me. AEW was very, very good. Mm-hmm. NXT was very good. And SmackDown were very good. So it was it was overall a really good entertaining week of uh, pro wrestling on the you know in the in the mainstream as it were, uh, and I, I like that you know we got Drake Maverick moving on in the cruiserweight title tournament to the final taking on El Hijo del Fantasma, uh, I, th- that has turned into a really great story arc, and I know a lot of people railed against WWE uh, using his real life woes in storyline, but again as we've said. It only is to Drake's benefit if he, in fact, does hit the indie scene. I'm of the I'm of the the belief that he is not going anywhere now. Yeah, uh, and and I'm I'm very I thought it's just told such a great story and what what a great heartfelt moment with Kushida telling him to go fight for his job and go fight for the championship. That was beautiful, beautiful stuff. I, I really enjoyed that. And just even a great triple threat match to open up the show and Jake Atlas just showing off more of his amazing talents that you and I've been lucky to see for the last couple of years over at APW. So it's so cool that the rest of the world is seeing what we've been get, been able to see here in, in Northern California, the wrestling scene here, but just even a cool, you know, interesting finish with Drake Maverick getting the pin, but also Jake was tapping to Kushida's submission hold. So just like really cool wonky finish there, but Great. yeah, very creative. And so, yeah, just uh, moving forward. So real quick, before I forget, just maybe an early guess, do you think Phantasma is really the leader behind those masked men in the, the trucks coming every I, I've kind of, I've kind of had a feeling because it is sort of the old, uh, I'm a big fan of the old shadow radio series and sort of pulp stuff like that. And the, you know, all those crime shows, it's, it's always the, uh, the one that gets away that's it's to divert suspicion. So he couldn't possibly be involved. I, I do think that it is very possible that it, okay. it, that it could be him. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm thinking too. It's like, He's trying to play it off like, oh, see, they came after me, too. Can't be me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm above suspicion. Yeah. So I'm all uh, for that. Uh, yeah, real maybe quick. they'll kidnap Drake Maverick. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's Drake Maverick. He puts a mask on and says, yeah. it's me all along. <laughs> but uh, uh, real quick, just Shotzi Blackheart. You see that little nasty uh, truth dot or what's it called? Is it truth? Wait, what's it? When you fall backwards. Uh, um, the trust fall. Trust fall. Yes, I would say truth fall or truth. No, but the trust fall. That was a little bit of a nasty uh, bump she took in her match. But um, she did. yeah, absolutely. And then uh, I, I was just going to ask you real quick. I know Adam Cole, Velveteen Dreams confirmed for Takeover, and uh, it's supposed to be Dream's last. Um, or it, Dream cannot challenge for the title if he loses again against Adam Cole if he has it still. Let me ask you this: Do you think whoever loses is going to get? bumped over to SmackDown? I hope not. Um, and, we, you know, I, I just, I, I like, I like the idea that, that NXT is going to keep its roster for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, and I know we're going to talk about this in a moment. They're losing Matt Riddle. I think that's kind of a bummer too. Uh, I, I, I hope that, I hope that Velveteen wins and cause I think it's his time. And, and I hope that, that Adam Cole and the undisputed era stay on NXT. I think the sort of story that they're building with his, angst with William Regal would lend itself to him leaving, Mm -hmm. you know, it would be a very easy sort of, uh, sort of jump to make that, you know, he has problems with management. So he's going to switch to raw or SmackDown. Uh, and, and they do that, but I, I hope, I hope they all stay in NXT. I'm not, I'm not interested in seeing, uh, any of them leave, but, um, we also had uh, more of the building feud between Carry On Cross and Tommaso Ciampa, and with you know Scarlett Bordeaux in the middle. I just I've loved everything about how they're building this up. I, again, like the the my anticipation for Cross and Scarlett coming to WWE and NXT specifically, uh, it's all been sort of exceeded my expectations and how they were going to debut them and make them feel like a big deal. Uh, I, I'm I'm thrilled with what they're doing so far. It's creepy. It's the right tone. I, I love it. And yeah, just the way she can kind of go out and like, uh, 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 you know, play with someone's emotions or kind of, you know, just eerie stare from a distance and kind of distract the competitors in the ring. And then Karrion Cross comes on the big screen, right? So they're like a one-two punch when they're going up against somebody. So that combo moving forward for future storylines and, um, uh, different matchups. I did. It's just, we're just seeing the the tip of what they can do in NXT and eventually who knows raw or SmackDown in maybe years to come. So 
it's overall just it's a nice pairing the two of them yeah absolutely so i'm thrilled to see where that's gonna how how their match is gonna go at takeover in your house uh as we previously stated adam cole and velveteen dream will vie for the nxt championship but the main event was a pit fight uh between matt riddle and timothy thatcher with kurt angle as the special guest referee I loved this. It, it gave me memories of the old Lions Den match between Owen Hart and Ken Shamrock. Yeah, uh, it was it was very brutal. I thought it came off very well. I'm so stoked that uh, Tim Thatcher got the win. Matt Riddle looked, you know, lost nothing in defeat. This was a just a phenomenally done main event on NXT, and just you know, I couldn't couldn't be happier for both guys, but in particular uh, Timothy Thatcher, who has just made a big big time impact early on in his time in NXT. And it's just uh, as an APW alumnus, uh, I'm very happy for him. Absolutely. And that's the thing you say, APW alumnus, you know, between him and Jake Atlas, it's like two of the studs that we've seen for a long time, just doing their thing on NXT. It's just so awesome to watch and support. But yeah, the the, the actual setup for the, the pit fight, the cage with the, like a double decker on there. Um, all of that is very cool. And hopefully this is something they can kind of use maybe again in the near future, not all the time. You don't want to burn it out, but for very big special occasions, I think that'd be really cool. Maybe once a year. And it's a nice change of scenery compared to just your regular steel cage match. So for me, I personally geeked out cause I was like looking at it. I was like, Whoa, how you can like have, you know, do their thing in the ring, but then take it up a level up, uh, up uh, like the balcony area, the scaffold up there. So like all that combined just made for an interesting, different type of presentation in the match and that like i said hopefully they'll keep using it for just really intense rivalries that's like the way to really settle the score but don't do it all the time you don't want to say burn it out but maybe like you said once a year i'm all for that yeah absolutely it has to be the right kind of competitors i'd love to see samoa joe in that setting 